Sir Francis Walsingham was born in 1532, at his family home in Footscray, near Chislehurst, in Ghent. His exact birth date is not known. His parents were William and Joyce Walsingham. His father was a very successful, wealthy, and well-connected London lawyer. Sadly he died in 1534, when Francis was barely two years old. His mother remarried in 1538, to Sir John Carey. Walsingham had five sisters, and was distantly related through his mother's second marriage to Anne Boleyn. He married twice, first to Anne Barnes in 1562, she died two years later. He then married Ursula St. Barb several years later. Ursula gave him two daughters, Francis and Mary. Walsingham's education would have begun, as any other noble's child would have been educated, in their home, with a tutor. Later he was enrolled at King's College in Cambridge, and when his studies there were complete, he headed to Europe to further his education. Upon his return in 1552, he enrolled at Gray's Inn, to further study to become a lawyer. When Edward VI died, and Mary I became queen, as with many nobles of Protestant faith, he was forced to leave England, and live abroad in Italy. Upon her death, Elizabeth I was proclaimed queen, and being a Protestant herself, he was finally able to return home. Upon his return and through support from fellow exiles returning home, he was given the opportunity to become a member of Elizabeth's first parliament, with the influence of the second Earl of Bedford, and was even elected for a second term. Through his support of the Huguenots, he would befriend, and work very closely with Nicholas Throckmorton. By 1569, he was working with William Cecil, and together they foiled many plots against Queen Elizabeth I, including the Ridovi plot which would see Mary Queen of Scots on the English throne. He was given the honour of a knighthood on December 1, 1577. Over many years Walsingham worked tirelessly for Queen Elizabeth, and earned himself the reputation and nickname, of her spy master. He would become instrumental in convincing Elizabeth to imprison Mary, and eventually, when enough evidence was collected, Mary was put on trial under the Act for the Surety of the Queen's Person, she was found guilty. Reluctant to go ahead with Mary's execution, Elizabeth signed her death warrant, but did not give specific instructions for it to be executed. Ever being the manipulator, and with his Queen's best interests always in his heart, Walsingham made the arrangements for Mary's execution. Unbeknownst to Elizabeth, and with Walsingham at his home unwell, Mary's warrant for execution was carried out. Sir Francis Walsingham died at his family home on April 6, 1590. Often complaining of ill health over many years, Walsingham spent much time at his country estate recuperating from various maladies, including pains in his back, stomach, and head. It has been suggested he suffered from kidney stones, diabetes, and urinary infections. He was interred, quietly, in a private ceremony, in the old St. Paul's Cathedral.